Uh, Grant, welcome. Thanks for being with us. Uh, just, I was so taken reading some comments that your coach, Kevin Sumlin, made about your off-season work or work during the quarantine period in particular and, and praise for handling adverse situations and helping your team grow. So here's your moment. Talk about that. Tell us uh, a little bit about that, what, what Coach Sumlin was, was talking about in his praise for you. Uh, I mean, you know, with Corona, everything's been just one big uncertainty and uh, not even just me as a team as a whole, we kind of, uh, we've kind of taken this mantra, you know, win every day, be one and know every day. And, you know, we can either, you know, focus on everything going on outside or we can focus on ourselves and as a team and be prepared to play whenever we get to. So, I mean, everything's falling behind that and, you know, staying focused, working on ourselves as a team and players. Uh, how was the quarantine for you? How did, how did it work out for you? Um, I mean, it was difficult. Of course we, uh, I've been here since June, I believe, you know, we started working out. We then uh, started workouts about a month in, then we got canceled, started back up for a new season, got canceled again. So, I mean, it was disappointing at times, but as a team, we never really got down or anything. We kind of just kept working, hoping and believing that we were going to have a season eventually, whether that be in the fall, winter, or spring. So for you as a player to work, to take advantage of that period, to work with Coach Mazzoni and to be the, knowing that you're going to be the guy now in that system, talk about that advancement that you made during the quarantine. I mean, it was a blessing in disguise, I believe, you know. I mean, ever since spring ball, I've been, we've been watching film almost like every day on Zoom. You know, it's something I would have never got if there was never the pandemic that happened, you know, getting that time with him to focus on the mental aspect of the game rather than on the field, you know, going through plays and stuff like that. I could really sit down with him and look at defenses, you know, the concepts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. What, what have you? What, what do you think you've improved on the most, and will we notice it when we see you play? Um, in the off season, I definitely uh, I focused. Mazzoni helped me a lot with my footwork, and I worked on my uh, arm strength a lot and uh, tightened up my motion. Footwork is that footwork within the pocket? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Mazzoni uh, made it a point to make sure my feet were quicker in the pocket. Mm -hmm. What, when you hear people say, as it was last year, people raved about your accuracy. Is that something you've worked on or is that is the sum of that a natural gift? Uh, yes, sir. I mean, that comes with all that. I mean, when you're working, working out, doing drills and stuff like that comes with it, you know. I think accuracy is, I mean, you can't really work on it, but that just comes with timing with the receivers and having that, that trust in each other. They're coming out of the breaks at certain times and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So accuracy is more of like a quarterback to receive the thing. So talk about your relationship with Booby, who I'm assuming we're going to see that blossom over the next uh, two months. Uh, yeah, yeah, sir. He's, um, he's family to me. I mean, blood couldn't make us any closer. Uh, I've known him since freshman year and uh, it's really, uh, it's outside of football. We're closer than anything. And uh, it kind of carries on to the field to that trust we have in each other that if I'm in trouble, I can go to him, stuff like that. And it's, uh, he's definitely taken a huge step from last year to this year as a player, and I can see that he's been working his tail off to become the best player he can be. So, Grant, give us your view, because we know a little bit about Booby from your relationship from high school, but who else is going to surprise us? Who do you think is ready to make a jump and help the Cats jump in the South this year? I mean, I I can't really single anyone out right now. I, in the receiving core because I mean truthfully they are all stepping up right now and there's no there's no single drop off whenever they're rotating in it's really cool to see when I'm out there and they're rotating in other receivers and there's literally no drop off so I mean I could I could honestly name every receiver right now <laughs> good all right well Grant thank you very much for doing that with us and I'll turn it back to Jesse thanks Ted and now we'll go to questions from the media as a reminder, use the raise hand function to get into the queue. Uh, our first question will come from Ryan Wohl of the Daily Wildcat. Hi, Grant. Uh, thank you. Uh, I was wondering, 
uh, who out of the running back group this year has stood out so far? Because I know you guys have a deep uh, group there. Um, definitely Gary Brightwell and uh, Michael Wiley have stood out to me. I mean, Gary kind of had a big year last year, but Mike, uh, he's put on some weight and he's running harder. He's always been shifty and he can catch out of the backfield. So it's cool to see them working right now, as well as um, Nate Tilford's kind of stepped up. He runs pretty hard. He's kind of a third and short back. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, next question will come from Michael Lev, Arizona Daily Star. Hey there, Grant. Um, one thing that we uh, didn't get to ask you about uh, when you were on with us um, earlier in camp was the letter uh, that you wrote to uh, California Governor Gavin Newsom when you know things were still hadn't you know fully unfolded as far as the Pac-12 getting to play. Um, what can you tell us about that process? Like, was it your idea? How did it all come together? Um, yeah, when we saw that uh, the California schools were kind of petitioning to get their um, governor to get behind them and let them play, me and a bunch of other players kind of met with uh, Dennis and we talked it over and said we want to support them and get them out there because without them, we're not playing either. So we put together that and we uh, sent it out because I mean, honestly, we support them as much as they support us, and we needed them to play this year. Do you think that the letters that USC sent and the one that you sent made a difference at the end of the day? Um, I believe so, yes, sir, because I think, I mean, shortly after that, he made a response to, I mean, not directly at us, but he made a response towards the football aspect of things, getting them back on the field. So I'm not sure how much of an impact it made, but I think there was a little bit of an impact. It kind sure. of uh, yeah, we're, um, we're scheduled to talk to Bryce Wolma tonight and sort of a annual subject among uh, Arizona fans is like, how much is the tight end going to be used in the passing game? And he only caught five balls last year. Do you expect the tight end to be a greater part of the, of the passing attack with you at quarterback? Yeah, yes, sir, for sure. I mean, tight end's always open to me. <laughs> and what have you seen out of not only him, but Stacey Marshall? What was that? Can you repeat that? Sorry. I'm sorry. What have you seen out of Bryce uh, this camp and also Stacey Marshall? Uh, they're doing a great job, honestly. I mean, we kind of made some tweaks to the offense with motions and stuff. And they've uh, picked it up seamlessly. And they're doing a great job blocking and getting open for me when there's like shot plays that are underneath for me or stuff like that. And they're doing a great job just getting open and being a, being a big body target for me. Thank you. Next question will come from Jordan Ham, Sports 360, Arizona. Hey, Grant, thanks for doing this. Um, you and Jaden Daniels at ASU both got to see time as freshmen last year. I'm just curious if you and Jaden have a relationship at all or talk and uh, your thoughts on the, the prospect of getting to go head to head with him uh, in the rivalry over the next couple of years. Uh, yeah, I, um, I've been to a few camps with him in uh, high school and stuff like that. We don't have I wouldn't say it's like a personal relationship, but we've talked a few times back then. And uh, he's a great player. And uh, I kind of use him as fuel for me because I know how great he's done and stuff like that. And I look at that and it kind of drives me. And I'm looking, I'm looking forward to the uh, Territorial Cup. Okay, next question. We'll go to Jay Gonzalez, uh, Fox Sports 1450. Hey Grant, um, you know you came in as a true freshman last year. You you got you got you know some starts. Um, or I don't know if one or more starts, but anyways, thinking back to your first start last year, and then when you're gonna you know start as you know in the first game this year, you know how's that going to be different for you? Um, I would say compared to last year, I was kind of the backup, and I was I didn't have as much pressure on me. But I always prepared like I was the starter. So coming into this year, I know I'm the, the kind of, I'm the kind of the team's leader. So as the quarterback, it's a little different. But I don't see too much difference in the way I'm preparing for it and uh, leading up to the game and stuff like that. Thank you, sir. Okay, next question will come from Teresa Rusnak. 
Hey, Grant, uh, thank you for your time this afternoon. I just wanted to ask you, when, when your head coach tested positive for COVID, how much more real did that make everything kind of going on? And what was that adjustment like? Um, yeah, I think we were just now starting practicing. We saw that he got COVID. It was kind of like, okay, I mean, we need to take this really serious. You know, we have testing every day, but anybody can get it. And we need to minimize how many people we're seeing and how well we're social distancing, stuff like that. So it was kind of an eye opener to see that, you know, anyone can get it, even our head coach. Thank you. And next question from Kelsey Kalisa Eckberg, uh, Cronkite PBS. Thanks so much for your time, Grant. With the crazy year we've been having, you've actually gotten an opportunity to be a viewer on College Football Saturday and gotten a chance to watch teams that you could potentially see later on in the season. Have you been able to take time to watch? What's that been like? And have you learned anything from this late start? Um, yeah, I've been watching College Football every Saturday because I don't really have anything else to do. So it's a little, uh, it's pretty sad watching that when I'm not getting to play, but I mean, what I've taken away from it is this season really is, I mean, you can't really base any teams right now. It's so much uncertainty with Corona going on and opting out and how many players are going to be out and stuff like that. So you have to, you have to prepare for the unknown in every game. So it's something, you know, it's going to be different from last year and any year before, and you kind of have to be able to roll with the punches, I would say. Excellent. Thanks so much. Okay, we'll go back to Jordan Ham, Sports 360 Arizona. As a reminder, if you have any questions, please use the raise hand function to get into the queue. Hey, Grant, uh, overall, just what sort of difference have you seen um, in Jamari Joyner as he gets more comfortable from year one to year two after transitioning as a wide receiver? Yeah, he's, uh, you can definitely tell he's been putting work in, and, you know, not just on the field, but his IQ towards the game and stuff like that, you know, pushing through five and, getting out of breaks, sitting and stuff like that, finding the zones and defenses. And uh, I mean, he's so raw because he just moved the receiver. And he's, I mean, every day you can see him making strides in his game as a receiver. Thank you. Okay, we'll go back to Jay Gonzalez. Hey Grant, I know it's still a, a ways off um, before you guys play Utah, are you? You know, where are you in the preparation of that? Are you thinking much about Utah right now? Are you guys still figuring out what you're doing? You know, how, what, what's going on in practice as it relates to that? Uh, right now we're kind of in fall camp mode, but uh, we're installing plays for Utah and stuff like that and kind of starting to watch film on them. And uh, so I, would, I wouldn't say we're in game week mode yet, but uh, kind of in between fall camp and game week. I don't really know how to put that. Sure. What, what kind of expectations do you have or have you thought about what it's going to be like, uh, you know, walking onto their field, playing in their place, you know, in your first game of the season? Um, I can just say I'm excited. You know, they're a, they're a great team. They always have been. And uh, I'm excited for us. We're, the, we're going to be the underdog all year. And uh, we're going to take it like that. We're going to take each day 1-0. So I'm just excited for that game. Thank you. Okay, next question will go to Alec White, Arizona Daily Star. Hey, Grant. I'm just curious, what, what what's the key for you when working on, on the deep ball? Is it more lifting weights to build arm strength? Is it, you know, working on timing and throwing routes in practice? What's what's the key to developing a better deep ball? Um, so this offseason, I met uh, – I started working with a QB coach in uh, – I really focused on my lower half and uh, separating my lower body with my upper body to get that torque. And that helped make uh, some huge strides in my deep ball and uh, just the overall velocity. But uh, deep ball wise, it's just, it's really timing receivers, knowing which guys can get out of the break faster, who's gonna get down field faster, and where to put the ball. So it's a little bit of me and a little bit more of timing with the receivers. And do you think that that it's been an improvement from what you had last year? Uh, yes, sir, I would say so. And what, why is that? Just, just more, more practice, more reps? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely, uh, I'm definitely throwing the ball a lot further than I could last year. Just 
frankly. All right, thank you. Okay, we'll go back to Michael Lev, Arizona Daily Star. Yeah, you, you mentioned how um, you feel a little different pressure as the known starting quarterback as opposed to last year uh, when you were the backup and you were kind of you know, rotating in there. How, how do you avoid letting that, that um, affect you on the field? In other words, how do you avoid the trying to do too much if you kind of know that you're in this leadership role and maybe you have to kind of carry the team a little bit? Uh, I mean, I always said, you know, if you don't feel those butterflies and that little pressure in your stomach before games, you're not, you don't love football. I kind of, I kind of feed off of that pressure. And that's kind of what drives me, you know, not during the game, but before the game. And what makes me want to work so hard is so that that pressure doesn't get to me. And, you know, I think anyone on the team would tell you that too, that that pressure is what makes them love football and what makes them drive to be as good as they can be. So I wouldn't say, I know it's a different pressure, but I wouldn't say it's the worst pressure. It's just, I kind of have the knowledge, like I'm starting the game. I'm not going to be coming off the bench or something like that. Or the game's already started or something like that. From a uh, preparation standpoint, from a comfort standpoint, confidence, what's the difference now between, or b between now and a year ago, let's say? I mean, last year was really just one big, learning step for me and uh every rep I got I felt like I was getting more comfortable with the speed of college football on the team and uh I mean that was a blessing for me to get that whole year experience and let it carry on into this year and spring ball and fall camp thank you sir okay next question we'll go to Sierra Luna uh Cronkite Hi, Grant. I have a different topic a little bit to talk about with you. Um, my question is um, regarding the upcoming election and U of A's efforts to get student athletes to register. Why is it important for you as a leader in the U of A community to encourage students and fans to um, vote? Uh, because I feel like that's your right. And that's your, that's what you're doing as a society in America to I mean you're voting on your future when you vote so I feel like that's important for everyone to do not just athletes for students for the community to vote and you know you're deciding on what you want this country to be and then um, your coach has been really vocal in keeping the football community together and standing and how important is it for you to just have the support of your team as well as support your teammates and their decisions to speak on different social injustices at this time? Uh, I would say, you know, we look at ourselves as a family and we support everyone and their different views. And, you know, you can't really, you don't judge anyone on their views. You just want to support them because that's your brother. And, you know, everyone comes from different walks of life and everyone has different aspects of life and you know their beliefs and stuff like that so all you can do is support them you don't want to you don't want to judge anyone on their different view because you don't know what they've been through and what they're going through and stuff like that thank you so much okay we'll go back to follow up from Tressa Rusnak hey Grant super non football related question at all real quick um do a poll of what is your favorite Halloween candy hey cats Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, I'll pull the media for any last questions, Halloween related or otherwise. And we'll go back to Jordan Ham, Jordan Ham Sports 360, Arizona. Hey, Grant, just to circle back up, uh, with the, the Territorial Cup QBs real quick. Uh, with Jaden, uh, you know, within his game, what jumps out to you the most? Um, I mean, first off, he's a, he manages the, great, manages the game greatly and uh, he's a super athlete. And uh, one thing that jumps out to me is his accuracy on balls. Just not short balls, but deep balls. And he, uh, he's definitely a game where he steps up in big moments. He's, he's been clutch in big games for them, I would say. Thank you. Sir. 
Okay, one last polling for, for any questions. Uh, we'll go to one, one final question, Ryan Wall, uh, the Daily Wildcat. Hi, Grant. Uh, I was uh, wondering if there's anyone in particular in the NFL um, that you look to like model your game after. Um, I my whole life I've kind of looked up to Tom Brady. You know, just the way he the way he takes on the game. You know, not just on the field but off the field. How he prepares. He kind of he's no moment's too big for him, and nothing's ever too big for him. He's he prepares every day like he's the backup of the team. He, he's always hungry for the next championship. He's never, he never is complacent with anything. That's kind of what drives him. I kind of, I respect that a lot. And that's how I want to model my game. Thanks for your time, Grant. Yes, sir. Indeed. Thanks for your time, Grant. Um, best of luck this season. Look forward to seeing you out on the field soon. Thank you, sir.